So I have been using Premiere Pro for well over a decade now, and anytime you've used a piece of software for that long, I feel like you pick up little tiny tricks that you notice over time have saved you a lot of time. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of little small things that you do that you think other people might not do or uh, maybe not do enough. In this video, I'm gonna share uh, some of mine with you. So I would like to reiterate real quick that I'm not saying that these tips are going to blow everyone's mind to pieces. They're just like little things that I swear by that I just think have saved me some time that I think not everyone's thinking about all the time. Uh, these might be helpful or these might be things that you are already doing, uh, but let's see. So the first one is what I call a clip heat map. So a lot of times I'm going through like really long interviews and it's hard to sort of keep organized which things are really good, which things are okay, and which things are just kind of like a maybe. But let's say that as I'm going through, I find some stuff um, that I just for sure know I'm gonna use. I will add my cut points and then I will label, let's say if I'm for sure gonna use it, it's definitely making the cut, I will label it as rose, which, you know, it's the closest thing we have to red in Premiere. And so, uh, yeah, rose is good there. But then let's say there's another clip and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need it, but you know, it's, it's not for sure gonna make the cut, but it's, it's, it's good. It's a good quality clip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that mango. And so we've got red, which is the hottest, mango, which is right after that. And then let's say there's just something that, you know, as you're going through, you're like, oh, that's kind of good, but I'm only gonna use that if I really, really need it, then that's gonna be yellow. You know, you say you've got an hour long interview and you see that there are three or four little red spots. Well, you can just grab those and throw those in the timeline and you generally know what they're gonna say. Color coding things this way really, really helps. All right, so let's take it one step further. We'll talk about keyboard shortcuts for changing clip colors. So one thing you can actually do uh, is you can set custom keyboard shortcuts for these colors. So I usually have it as the top three numbers on my numpad, so seven, eight, and nine. So let's go find yellow and we will set that to seven. We'll go to mango, we'll set that to eight. And then we will go to rows and we'll make that nine. And to get that, you just double click right on this little shortcut part. So as we're going through, we can just watch through our sequence and go, boom, okay, that's a seven. Okay, and then, mm, yep, oh, this one's definitely making the cut. You select it, hit nine. I've just really gotten in the habit of just hitting seven, eight, or nine. And yeah, I highly recommend it. Now let's talk about one of my favorite tips for multi-camera editing. So we have a multi-camera sequence here, and if you don't know how to set one up, that would be a different tutorial for a different day. There's lots of really good tutorials out there. We've got drummer, guitarist, singer, and wide shot. And if we play through, you can see, so usually what you would do is just kind of click on various cameras when you want to make a cut. This is our program monitor over here, and I just have all these clips looping. And this is one way to do it. See, now as we click on the various windows, it's making cuts down here. Let's say we wanna make this even easier on ourselves. So let's go to keyboard shortcuts yet again. And we're going to search for cut two. And so boom, cut to camera one, two, three, and four. And as you can probably guess, I'm going to bind these to the number pad again. So camera one, we're gonna type in one. Camera two. Too. And I actually like to set it up as like a kind of a square. So it, it sort of mimics the look of the way that it looks on here. So I'm actually going to put camera three on number, number four here and camera four on five so that it's kind of all in like a square on the number pad, if that makes sense. So now when I play, I can edit by hitting the number pad. And uh, you know, this at this point, you're basically j like just doing live multi-camera editing. It, it, and honestly, it gets really, really fun because you can kind of like, especially if it's a musical performance, you can really just start to feel the music and feel the performance. 
it's just a really powerful technique for multi-camera editing, in my opinion. So another really underrated tool in Premiere is a thing called Reveal in Project. So when I am editing, and this is just a really quick thrown together example with a bunch of really, really random footage, uh, including this. Let's say you have a bunch of different footage and it's all in all these different subfolders. And as you're editing, you might want some more of a certain thing. And it can be really annoying to have to kind of look at it and be like, okay, wait, which folder was it in? Was it in, uh, you know, and it does, it just takes a couple of seconds sometimes to think through, okay, wait, which folder was that in? And it, it, it could just take an extra step. So one thing that I've just sort of always done is I just right click and there's this button right here that says reveal in project. And um, you know, this might not be a big deal, but it, you just click and it takes you right to that clip. And you know, it takes you into the clip in the context of the folder where it is. So, you know, if you're like 30 clips down when a certain part of your footage is, is happening, um, you can just really quickly get back to that spot and go down to the next clip and keep editing. And uh, you know, it just save, it saves me so much time. You know, you're just going through and, and boom, now we're like, Here's where this clip is in this folder. And so you kind of might remember from the, the day that you were shooting, well, this is the next one uh, that I shot. And so I'll be able to go down and find the next clip. And uh, yeah, as you might have guessed, we're going to make that a keyboard shortcut. So where I have, so you just search for reveal in project. And uh, you want to make sure that you do it for the timeline panel. And right here, we have reveal and project. And you can see I've set it to the forward slash uh, key on the numpad. So basically, it makes me insanely fast. I just click and forward slash, click, forward slash, click, forward slash. And I am just flying through my project bin, finding what I need to find. So now I want to talk about default transition duration. You may or may not know, but between clips, if you want to click, you can say apply default transition. And it's going to add a cross dissolve, uh, whether you are talking about video or um, audio. So uh, by default, the audio transition duration, I think is something like a second long, which obviously doesn't really work because it'll make uh, you know the two clips blend together a little too long. And so as I'm editing, um, what I really love to be able to do is just go boom, apply default transition, boom, apply default transition. But you don't really wanna have to go back through and uh, shorten them up. And so it's, this is a pretty, pretty easy one, but again, I keep finding a lot of people who don't know about it. I go to edit preferences and we go to timeline. And then here we have a nice little uh, setting for video transition default duration and audio transition default duration. And so here we can go by frames or seconds and I just make both three seconds long. I rarely ever use video cross dissolves. I, I think they're kind of cheesy looking, but now I can right click apply default transition. And if we scroll in, we can see we have a tiny little fade. All right, so let's talk about getting kind of the most bang for your buck out of one sound design element. So you can turn one sound effect into something that sounds like many different sound effects. So here we are in Premiere and we've got this little whoosh sound, okay? So you can hear that, it's a cool little sound effect. So let's say you need another whoosh later on in the edit. Um, so what you could do is you could hold down the Alt key, click and drag. That's gonna make a copy. So um, we have the, the exact same sound effect happening twice. As a viewer, it's a lot easier to pick up on that and I think people notice it um, a lot more easy than you might think. So there's some ways that I like to sort of make a, a copy of a sound effect sound different than its uh, predecessors. So one easy way to do it is to right click, go to speed and duration, and just change the speed a little bit. That's gonna pitch it down or up depending on what you do, but it doesn't need much. Like, let's just go down to like 90. Okay, so now we've got, and it, it, it sounds different enough. Like a viewer is not really gonna pick that up as easily. Um, another thing you can do, which is similar, is go to speed and duration and you can just reverse the clip itself. So now we've got, okay? And that's great. But if you wanna take it a further step into feeling like a totally different uh, sound design element, what I like to do is go over to my effects panel and we're going to 
grab a low pass okay so grab a low pass and that's a low pass filter what that's going to do is it's going to filter out the higher frequencies of your clip so let's listen to it now so now we have a totally different sounding clip from this one and it's the same clip we've just cut out the higher end of the frequencies and i think that's kind of a tasteful way to do it now if you select your clip and go to the effect controls panel you can actually decide how much of those higher frequencies you are chopping out so right now we're at uh, 1375 hertz or so we can actually turn that up and it's going to sound different again and your viewer is really not going to notice that it's the same sound twice and this next tip is going to uh, sort of address one of my biggest pet peeves about using some of the audio effects in Premiere and other editing software. So we have this kind of impact sound effect here. Let's say we wanted this sound effect to have a little bit more staying power. We wanted it to last longer in the cut and maybe have a little bit more impact, like maybe some uh, delay or reverb or something like that. So yeah, let's maybe uh, throw on some uh, some delay or reverb or something like that. So let's go to our audio effects and we'll go to delay and echo. And let's just take an analog delay on here and we'll go to effect controls, edit, and I'll just choose a preset. Um, let's do uh, something like, let's do a round robin delay. This is gonna kind of, this is gonna be pretty, uh, pretty intense. You probably wouldn't actually use it uh, this way. Okay, so we have a delay effect on here. And so that's how it's always bothered me. Once it reaches the end of this clip, uh, it, the sound stops, which delay you kind of want it to, to go on and on and on. Uh, and so that kind of defeats the purpose of using the delay. So this issue has always kind of bothered me a little bit. And uh, eventually I found kind of a silly workaround. And uh, so that is to go to right click your clip and go to nest and we'll call it delayed boom. And so now we can double click and go into this nest and I'm gonna go to our project bin. I'm gonna go to this new item button and I'm gonna say black video. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm just going to take this and extend this indefinitely okay so now we have this black video and and our clip just hanging around right here now we can actually go into our main sequence where we were before and we can extend this now okay so now this clip is as long as we want it to be because we can go into our nest and we have this black video that's allowing us to extend it it's not adding any video to the sequence but we can now make this sound effect go for as long in, on the edit as we want it to go. And so now there's no hard cutoff on the sound effect and we can, uh, we can extend it for as long as we want. All right, and now uh, some tips for working with uh, slow motion or different frame rate footage from your normal timeline uh, frame rate. So here I have a bunch of footage and some of it is uh, 23.976 and some of it is 59.94 frames per second. So some of it is slow motion, some of it isn't. Um, one thing that I love to do is I sort by frame rate for a second first just to kind of group everything. And then I take everything that is in 59.94 and I'll give it its own color coding. So I'll select all of my slow motion clips. Usually I'll just go with something like purple or green or something like that. And then so now I can uh, sort again by the name and just know at a glance which stuff is slow motion and which stuff isn't. Now let's talk about an easy way to get your client's colors uh, into your edit. A common thing is your client, you know, hasn't sent you brand guidelines um, and you're making some sort of graphic. So in this example here, I have this transition file. So let's say I was just using this in a cut for a, a client and I needed to match their colors here for this transition. And so say they haven't sent me the brand guidelines, I don't know what the colors are. Instead of sending them a, an email and asking them, hey, can you send me the brand guidelines? Or hey, what are your, your color codes? That sort of thing. 
Um, what I've always done is I just go to their website using Vidivo's website as an example. So right off the bat, you can get a pretty good idea of what their brand colors are. Here's kind of their, their key blue and maybe this gray is one of the colors as well and maybe this darker blue up here. So generally speaking, your client's colors are gonna be on their website if they have one. So I use this tool right here up, up in my toolbar and it's uh, called Colorzilla or Color Picker and they have a version of it for every single uh, browser and it has made my life so much easier. Basically, you can just click and click on a color and it's already copied it to your uh, clipboard. So now I go back into Premiere and I have this little color selector here and all I got to do is just paste the color in there and boom now we've got one of our colors we'll just go back uh, let's get this lighter blue you just click click remove the pound sign boom and so yeah it's it's pretty simple little technique so here colorzilla for chrome or color picker they have it for firefox safari that you know you can get it for any uh, whatever browser you like to use. And this next tip is about how to get really good looking screen captures for your videos. So a common thing that I'm asked to do is to uh, include some, you know, scrolling footage of a website in a video. So there's a few little tricks and tips that I have for that. And some of them might be a little PC specific. So if you're on a Mac, I'm sure there's alternatives that do the same thing. But let me tell you about a thing called ShareX. And ShareX is the absolute best uh, screen capture thing I've ever come across. It's free, uh, so you can download it. And basically you can use it to capture in a number of different ways. You can get GIFs, you can get uh, regions, stuff. Um, but it has some really, really good features and it records really high quality, which I really like. Um, and I have it actually mapped uh, screenshot wise to control shift four. And so now I've launched the, uh, the, the whole thing and I can just select and it's going to select whatever I've got going on. Um, so yeah, and then it, it's automatically going to create a file and it's going to bring up the folder that the file's in and it's just really fun to use. So uh, let's say we're doing a screen capture of the Vidivo webpage. I'm going to go to capture uh, screen recording and then you can actually just select a region here and now it's recording. You can see down here um, we're already up to four or five seconds. Now in terms of the scrolling footage itself, one thing that always bothers me is when you see footage where it's like really jerky like this like when people scroll it's not nice to look at um, and I just feel like that is really sort of off-putting so what I like to do is click a little bit off of the recording area and I just hit that middle mouse button and bring up that little that little scroll wheel like that and then now we have a really nice smooth scroll and again, it's a really small tip, but I use this like every single day. And it's, you know, it's nice to kind of hide it off the actual screen capture itself. So it just looks really nice and smooth. It's just gonna pop up right here and you just drag it straight into your project bin and uh, drop it straight into your cut and it's gonna look really nice. Yeah, so I know a lot of these tricks weren't necessarily mind blowing, but they, like I said, it's just like little small things that um, I've found very helpful over the years. Anyways, try them out if you want to. Don't if you don't want to. Hopefully you found at least one thing that'll save you some time uh, in Premiere Pro. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.